If you ask somebody what's their favourite car to drive and their answer is anything but a Subaru, then they've clearly never drove a Subaru. But this video isn't necessarily about my car though, it's about how I converted it into a living space that I have spent months on end living in, doing over 20,000 miles through 9 different countries. I hope you can get some inspiration from this video if you're looking to do a conversion yourself in the same way that I turn to YouTube to inspire me to convert this car. In this video I'm going to show you my setup and how I get by comfortably with so little space. What is up guys, welcome back to I'm So Craigie. Today, I thought I'd show you through my car setup. I've spent months living in this thing. So for those of you who are looking to do a car conversion yourself and you need a bit of inspiration, I got you. Come on. So we'll start off with my side door here. I guess you could call it the utility room. I don't know, it's where I keep a load of random Let's check it out. So in here guys, I've just got a load of random stuff, primarily my cooking stuff actually. I've got my kettle, hiking boots, i got an umbrella here, coal, gas cooker, and a whole load of gas canisters as well. I've also got a diesel jerry can down there as well, but I've got two diesel jerry cans because I've been doing a lot of mileage in sometimes some really remote areas. So uh, i got two of them just to be sure. Basically all my cooking stuff is in here and a few other random things. I also got a tent as well. Also guys, this bit of kit, anyone who's road tripping, definitely take one of these with you guys. It's a tire pump, you plug it into your fag lighter, works wonders. For the entire of my Wales trip, I had a slow puncture in this tyre right here. So every four or five days, I had to break this out just to pump some air into it. It was a lifesaver. Right, let's get on to the main living area. So, this is my main living area, guys. Feast your eyes on this. So, as you can see, I got my bed. This is where the magic happens. I got my clothes storage here, as you can see easily accessible. I first started off when I was up in Scotland I first had my clothes under here and all my cooking equipment up here and that was just a right pain in the ass because getting this under here every time was a right pain and I had to pull it all the way out to get the new clothes. It was, it was a right pain. I actually had this wooden panel here I had two of these I had one either side and my mattress was on top of the other one under this side I had my winter clothes, under this side I had my summer clothes or any spare stuff. That left me with like no headroom. I was waking up in the morning like that, staring at the roof, so so I got rid of that. Got a bigger mattress as well, foam mattress. This is a 150ml foam mattress. Once again, thank you so much to Sarah and her family for letting me have this. This is so much more comfortable than the airbed I was using before. And I got loads of headroom as well. Under this side, I've got all my cooking utensils and stuff like that, pots, pans, plates. Here, I got all my food, my dry food, rice, pasta, things like that, tea bags. Inside this little compartment, brush. When you come back from a hike and your shoes are all dirty or your boots, give them a little scrub. Don't want to be getting dirt in your car. Tape, I actually use this for something different. We'll get onto that in a bit. I got a little WD-40, little baby WD-40 can. But underneath my garage, which we'll get to, I got a big ass can as well. Behind here, I have got a power bank, and that power bank powers the light bulb. I just use it just for the light bulb. That is a massive power bank. I'll charge it up like once a month, and it just powers the light bulb for ages. It's brilliant. So I'm not using my lights on my car, draining my car battery. Let's have a look at the other side. So in this side, guys, I have my little portable gym resistance bands. I got a couple of them in there if I want to do a workout in the woods. A uh, fan. On medium speed, it'll last most of the Night. On full speed, it lasts about four or five hours. It gets you to sleep. When I was touring Europe in the summer, this thing, as little as it is, was a lifesaver. It did very little, but without this, it would have just been a hell of a lot worse. This bottle of JD. That's been in there for months. Only a tiny little bit left. I should probably finish that off. Hair clippers, guys. Mainly for my beard. I do sometimes cut my hair with it. Just to have a quick shave while you're out in the woods. Like things like my Bluetooth speaker, can't go anywhere without that. A waterproof sack. If I'm going out on a hike, sometimes in Spain, car theft is pretty high in Spain, so I would want to take my laptop and with me it actually never rained at all when I was there because you know it was summer but if I had my stuff with me and it started to rain even my camera here I'd, I'd, I would always take this in my backpack seat with me and I'll just throw everything in this just to be safe my bungees always travel with bungees when you live in van life car life whatever you're doing these things are great oh I almost forgot check this out this is my dad's this was I think I used it when he went fishing I've never actually used this but I should really this is awesome are you ready for this <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> now I've got an umbrella everywhere I go. In this side, I have got a little bag here that I use to hold pegs. If you do any laundry when you're out on the road, or for whatever other reason really, get yourself some paracord. Hanging up your laundry to dry is what I use it for. Right, and what is this? This is my toilet utensils. Let me show you where the toilet is, guys. This is my toilet. You know the score. Dig a hole. Do your business. Come on. 
Right, so along the side of here I have my books if I fancy doing a bit of reading. A knife, there's a hunting knife. Flag there just for decoration, obviously my bed. And then we got my bathroom area, but we'll get to that. This drinks canister is drinking water. Along here I would normally put things like uh, milk or cooking oil, things like that. Holds it in place when I'm driving. And the tissues. At the top here guys, I've got my extra storage. I usually put my phone up there at night. As you can see I've got two carabiners there and there. And as I've said in a previous video, I used one of them to clip my my keys on at night so I don't lose my keys. I got my light here powered by the power bank as I previously mentioned and I also have fairy lights and at night they look cool guys. Guys so that is my living space. Now I did mention earlier on about this tape what I use it for. Obviously I use this tape as well. What I've been using it for is to jam a little hook here that the door hooks onto when it closes. So when I'm sleeping in my car I just jam my tape down there like that and when I close the door it doesn't fully close. With me inside it sleeping, I'm not worrying about someone trying to steal anything because all the other doors I lock by hand. In the morning when I want to get up, I just kick it open with my feet and voila. Now let me show you my garage area where I keep all my tools and things like that. The main thing and what everybody should be traveling with because I use it all the time is a toolbox. This thing, I've used it so many times, honestly it's great. If you want some firewood, bring a saw, you guys. Other things I have way at the back are jumper cables, duct tape, got air intake cleaner. We'll get to where I have that later on in the video. Oil, in case you need to top up when you're on the road. And then other things in the back, guys, I've got a couple of ratchet sets, some zip ties. I also have a summer setup where I have a mosquito net that I hang up inside here and I put my bed inside it. When I'm somewhere hot, I got my windows down at night. I don't want to be eaten alive. If you want to see that, click in the top right corner now and uh, it'll take you to the video where I talk you through that in more detail. Also, on that same video, I mentioned this, but I'll mention it again. How I hang things up to dry when I'm on the road is simply put the up there like that, hang my towel over like that and then I just use one of these to hold it in place. You can still see at the back for this part. Right, let's get on to the bathroom. Right guys, so in here is my bathroom. Come and have a look at this. Right, so where do I begin? I know, I'll we'll start with the fridge. As you can see guys, I've got a little cool box down here. I really ever use it, but if I got butter or anything like that, put it in there, it helps a little, not much. Up here I've got my sink. I have running water in here, guys. Look at that. Great for having showers, brushing my teeth in the morning, washing my face. You'll see me take showers on a few of my videos actually, guys, with this. Put the window down a bit, put it outside the window, close the door and I shower just outside my car area. If it's raining and I don't want to get out of the car in the morning to stand here and brush my teeth, I can even do it just from in bed because i got a little collapsible sink here. I do everything in that sink, guys. I do my laundry, I do my washing up, and I do my morning routine in that sink. What I have here, just your regular toiletries, guys, and my fairy liquid, of course. I've got an extra bit of storage here. I don't really use it, but I want to put things in it. Shower gel or whatever. I got that there. The water tank in here. It's gravity fed. That's my drinking water. This is spare water. It's obviously one of those pumpy things which I can use for whatever, but I also use it as a container just for carrying spare drinking water, especially when I'm in a hot climate. This has saved my ass in Spain. However, this is not drinking water. I fill that up in waterfalls, rivers, wherever I can really, but I don't drink it, I just use it for washing. This wooden thing here is a table. I also have a chair to go with it. I'll show you the chair in a second, guys. And as you can see under here, I've got my spare toilet rolls, and I've also got access to the back of my cooking utensils from here as well. You can go right in, so if there's something at the back I need to grab. Under here, you can't really see it, guys, I've got my laundry powder. I wash my clothes in the sink and I hang them out to dry. You can see that on my San Fermin episode, guys, up here in the top right. And of course, I've got my cloth for washing my dishes and my tea towel. That is my bathroom, guys. Let's get on to, I don't know what you'd call it, the dirty area, I guess, where I keep my rubbish, where I keep my dirty laundry. Guys, first I'll talk about this backpack, I always have my backpack with me in the passenger seat. I always keep loaded with shower gel and a towel. If I see a quick opportunity to have a shower, maybe I'm driving past a campsite and the toilet block is unlocked, pull my car up, I grab this, I know I can have a quick shower. I'd also keep a change of clothes and stuff in here as well. Always ready. Because when you're living in your car, showers are few and far between, unless you're showering with that thing, but water is scarce. So pull my car over, grab my bag, leg it in there, get it done, throw my bag back here, and I'm out of here. Down here, guys, I have my bin bags. I got a pair of binos. If I'm out somewhere nice, 
bikes. I want to do some spying, I got some binoculars. My first aid kit here as well. I have used it actually, when I did the Three Peaks Challenge, plaster my feet up. I've got another umbrella, because if it's raining and I want to cook outside, I use one umbrella to go over the stove or whatever I'm using, and one umbrella to go over me. Then here I got my laundry bag, keep it down there out of the way. I also tie my bin bags here, maybe just on the handle or something like that. I went as far away from the living area as possible, my rubbish and my laundry, and this is pretty much it, right? Uh, my towel. So obviously my towel is a towel, but I also use this as the curtain here for when I'm going to sleep. I'll show you that in a sec, guys. Let's look in the glove box. Let's have a look. Whoops, you weren't meant to see that. Up here, I have this computer thing. When you have an engine fault come up, you plug it into your car and it tells you what's wrong. It saves you having to go to a garage and then to charge you or rip you off just to tell you the error code. So I actually used this on my part one of when I was in France. Didn't make the final cut of the video. The problem was the math sensor was dirty, which is why I got the math sensor cleaner in the back there, if you remember I said earlier on in the video. Now, if I had taken that to a garage, they would have probably said I need a new math sensor, charged me for a brand new one. Wouldn't have cost a lot, but still, they would have ripped me off. I was in the middle of France. Because I had this, I found the error myself, went to the shop, bought some math sensor cleaner, and the problem was solved. Honestly guys, travel with one of these. And they're super cheap. I paid like 15 quid for it on Amazon. And tire pressure sensor. And then playing cards, in case I bump into other travellers of other camper vans. And uh, we want to have a little drinking game. And here i got all my car information. Guys, if you're travelling Europe, you need to be travelling with a printout of your insurance, saying that you're insured to drive the car in this country. So I'd normally keep this in my glove box, along with other important documents such as my passport which is in here now and down here I have my trusty Atlas I use this thing a lot guys I love traveling by Atlas it is a lot more fun than traveling by sat nav if I've got nowhere to be no time constraints why would I pump it in a sat nav I take this if I get lost even better because it adds to the adventure right guys that's my dirty area let's move on come to the cockpit guys this is where it all goes on guys where I do my driving. Let me show you how I prepare my car for bed time. The first thing I do is open my sunroof blind about halfway. Then I grab my towel, I peg the towel to the top here like this. I either get another peg and I peg it here or I just tuck it in somewhere and then the same on the other side. The second thing I do is arrange the seat. I have it preset so it moves all the way forward, giving me a substantial amount of extra room. Guys, one thing I forgot to mention earlier as well, in here, beneath all my tools and stuff, I also have a spare space saver tire and it has come in handy. I have used it if you watched my video where I went swimming with seals on the Isle of Lundy with my sister. I had a blowout on the M49 and if it wasn't for the spare tire, we would have missed the ferry. Also, I mentioned earlier that I have a chair with me, just a little thing like that I keep it stored under my mattress let me show you how I get in and out of the car it is super comfortable in here guys honestly and when I want to get out kick the door open in the morning it's a simple case of pulling yourself out it's as easy as that however I did used to use a different method of getting out. I used to use my sunroof to get out, but I will say that sunroof saved my car from being a write-off. When that fire broke out, when I was asleep in the back in Ireland, so what happened in Ireland is that I'd got drunk that night with a guy I'd met in the lookout. He was just hiking. So we met, we got drunk together, some Irish guy, had a barbecue and all that. I put the barbecue out. When I went to bed, I opened my, not just my sunroof blinds, but my entire window so I could stargaze because we had no light pollution. We were in the middle of nowhere overlooking these giant sea cliffs. It was lush. I fell asleep and having the window open I could hear the crackling of the fire it was already blazing at this point but I heard the crackling and that is what certainly saved my car because next would have been the back tires they would have blown below the passenger seats at the back here is the fuel tank who knows it could have been a lot worse if I never had that sunroof completely open I wouldn't have heard that I was drunk I would have slept right through it and God knows what would have happened the entire back of my car was burned everything the car was parked right here look at my car imagine waking up to that the only electrical damage I had was the, the rear parking sensors, which are, uh, I think, this is the remainder of one of them. The rest are non-existent. I've stuck my thing on with tape, lost my badge, my lights all work, look at this. My wiper's a bit dodgy, but it still works. Oh god, look at it all, I'm just f***ing devastated I am. Ugh. I was very lucky to find a guy in Limerick who was scrapping not only the same car but the same colour. He was breaking it. I negotiated with him for 200 euros. He gave me the entire back end. I was very lucky there, guys. Let me show you how I escaped. So I'm lying in bed like this and I hear crackling of a fire. My eyes are wide open and I see just out the window there a blazing fire. I sh my pants. I am over this thing. 
I was out of that thing in a flash. Straight in the car, start the engine, drive it forward, banging on the other guy's door. There's a fire. What a disaster that was. So you might notice that my back window isn't tinted like my side windows. That's the reason why. The last thing I want to show you guys is how I have my car when I'm not touring, when I'm living day to day life at home. Check this out. So I have this set up on two hinges. So it folds up here like so and here. So it just stretches back just like that. And then the table and the seat folds up. And now I've got myself a three-seater car and a bed. Wherever I go with my car, I can sleep. And just having that bit of comfort, just knowing in the back of my mind, if anything goes wrong, I've got a bed. Honestly, it's great, I love it. Obviously, I take all this stuff out, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And there we have it, guys. A three-seater bed conversion. Unfortunately, guys, this will be my last video with this beauty. We've seen some places, been on some adventures, been a hell of a ride. I'm absolutely gutted to have to sell her. There's nothing wrong with her, but I'm still gonna be uploading. I've got a lot of great ideas, a lot of big ideas for this channel, guys. So don't worry about that. But until then, I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>